morning on. Got my coffee. Very good. We are doing something very exciting today and possibly quite stressful. We are going through the Singapore Strait, one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, if not the busiest shipping lane in the world. So we're both feeling like excited, but maybe a tad nervous. It will all be okay. We are currently just anchored up a little river just before you get to Singapore. So still in Malaysia and we had a very calm, lovely night. We are literally anchored like just a few miles away from Changi Airport, which is crazy. So Changi Airport is literally like right there. <laughs> We've been watching the planes take off and land. It's been very cool. And Nick's just raising the anchor and we're gonna get going very, very soon. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> It's called finessing our mainsail raising technique. We've uh, been trying to get it like super right. And I think that's pretty as good as we're gonna get. We started off just using the wind hold on the autopilot and then one of us each, each helm to watch the sail. That unfortunately wasn't working because the uh, wind hold just wasn't accurate enough. We then moved to one of us being on the helm because it gives you much better control and that does work well. Uh, the main goes up very effectively now and the only thing that we've had to kind of finesse a little bit more after that is the topping lift because you have to get the topping lift on or you kind of like smash the boom into the dock or the, the, uh, the top the coach roof and the problem is if you're super head to wind because it's a square top male the bat square topped main the battens bind against the topping lift if you're slightly on port like two degrees to port you've got to stay two degrees to port or starboard and then the sail sits the right side of the topping lift and it doesn't bind, which basically means you can get the mainsail all the way up, take the weight of the boom on the mainsail and then release the topping lift. Hey, Therese. That's the theory. That's, that's the theory. Find, that's what we try to achieve. Singapore straight, here we come. So we're just entering the Singapore straight now and we've decided that we'll both be on watch the whole time keeping an eye on everything, on the AIS, obviously a very close lookout. And while we're both on watch and keeping a lookout, Nick is solely in charge of actual navigation. Um, he's got a lot more experience going through the Dover Straits, which is the busiest shipping lane in the world. I looked it up, apparently the Malacca Straits, which I think include the Singapore Strait, is the second busiest. So we first need to weave our way through this kind of anchorage area. So all these boats you can see behind me are stationary. There's loads. You can see them all here. And then once we're through this zone, then we're making our way to the shipping lanes. That's our strategy. Just, uh, you know, motor on down the shipping lanes with all of the big cargo ships. Hopefully today goes smoothly. We have absolutely no wind at all. We've got both engines on in overdrive. We just want to get through as quickly as possible. Yeah, that one's called Thames. Nick is bloody loving this. <laughs> I love ships, I love boats, I love all these things. I just, I think it's all just fascinating. I absolutely love it. I yeah. love, I don't know, I've always had a fascination with ships. Hence, Hence all this. I mean, the size of these things is just mind boggling. So just a couple of points that I, we, we had a little debrief or a brief before we uh, set off. Firstly, we're going to skirt the shipping lanes. We're going to skirt outside the shipping lanes by about 200 meters. That's, uh, that's the plan. We'll be on the purple line either way, then we could just move A and B. And we picked up quite a bit of uh, good current. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to keep both engines on in overdrive because the quicker we can utilize this and the more progress we can make with fair current, the less we're going to get knocked with foul. If we can do 20 to 30 miles through the straits with fair tide, that's a long way. And then it's easier to do this with fair tide rather than punching through the Singapore Strait. I'm actually looking forward to this. Just do everything respectfully, listen to the radio. If the Singapore VTS uh, need to get hold of us, they will MMS, they'll, they'll message us on the MMSI. We'll hear everything going on. 
and um, yeah, just enjoy it because it is a unique experience. There was a whole thing on, uh, we discussing this, is, is this the busiest shipping lane in the world? Actually, it's not, Dover is. And we've done Dover Straits a few times. So this is just- Yeah, okay, you've done Dover Straits. Right? Yeah, I've done Dover Straits many times. Anyway, this is just a sunny version of Dover Straits. Yeah. And he, and he, well, actually, they can say without the sausage and mash at the end of it, there will be sausage and mash at the end of the day. All right, we are officially in the Singapore Strait. We have a container ship just in front of us, in, just behind me. And uh, it's doing only a little bit more speed than we are. So we're just kind of going to follow it down, not quite in the shipping lanes. We're about how far away from the shipping lane are we, Nick? Like maybe 100 meters. And we're just going to follow the edge of the shipping lane all the way down. That's our strategy. Another point, just from a navigational perspective, I was just saying this to Therese, we're using the autopilot and you can have heading hold or you can have navigational hold. If you put it on navigational hold, essentially the boat will not drift into the shipping lanes. That you, yeah, you just put a route in that literally just shadows the, the pink line on the chart, which is the position of the shipping lanes. If you use the heading hold, you've got to continuously watch it to make sure that you're not getting leeway or, or drift or anything else. This way, the boat will compensate for it. Every and the shipping lanes, the way that they are, they don't curve, they're literally like, yeah, straight lines. But every time we get to another point, we'll continue to change the navigation. The other point about this is we did the we checked on the AAS that vessel is doing eight knots, we are doing eight knots. That for us is a real advantage. I am not sure whether protocol allows ships to overtake, but it essentially means that while we are shadowing this boat or this vessel, other boats won't creep up on it, they won't come within a mile of it there has to be a separation between them. Sails are up and we are motor sailing down the Singapore Strait. And I can see Singapore. That's the first time I've been going faster than a cargo ship. So now that we're abreast of it, you can see that actually we're probably making a good knot or two on her. Maybe she has to slow to turn, I don't know. Nick's making sausage sandwiches for lunch, or no, not lunch at all, for breakfast. Can't wait. It's more like a brunch, a second breakfast. Copy that, going channel one, four, over. Singapore Police, Singapore Police, this is yacht Ruby Rose 2, over. The LOA is 13 meters, 70 centimeters. Basically, uh, any VTS system, any, I mean, these shipping lanes, it's like Dover. They are monitored like supremely by like radar. They know exactly where you are at all times. So what happens, they hailed us on 16 and just said you know this is the singapore police please go 14. possibly with hindsight we should have known what channel to have on and we should have a dual watch on 16 and 14 but nonetheless they hailed us on 16. we made a we decided this morning like get, although there's a whole heap of radio chatter going on and it's a bit of a pain in the ass to have the have the volume up full on the radio so they hailed us essentially they just wanted to know who was on board flag of the ship uh, and beam dimension, they know they know how fast we are and they just probably want to check, I mean, everything should be in our AIS. So they wanted to know tonnage and they wanted to know where we were going. And they just, the only thing, they were super polite and you know, it's it's all authorities are generally super polite anyway. And they're like, okay, just please go inside the shipping lane. Look, don't, I mean, we're literally, it's, we're 100 meters outside, we're just gone 100 meters inside. Anyway, onward and forward. Really good sausage sandwich. Yeah. We've just been asked by VTS to go into the middle of the shipping, the port hand side, because there's a, a big cargo vessel picking up a pilot. 
we can't turn the radio down just because it's, there's too much information that we need to listen to. Anyway, so we're just now cutting through the middle lane. Hey everyone, I just wanted to quickly interrupt this episode to tell you two very important things. First of all, this is a real time update. We are in Turkey, which is very exciting. So as a lot of you may know, our episodes are usually between a few weeks and a few months behind. So at this very moment in time, in June, we are currently in Turkey. The episodes that you're watching right now are of our time making our way up to Phuket to put Ruby Rose 2 on a ship to bring her to Turkey. So that's all happened in real time. But the second thing that I wanted to tell you was that now that we are in Turkey, we are able to organize our 2024 Patreon meetup. Now, we did a 2023 Patreon meetup in Thailand. It was a raging success. We had so much fun. We had about 40 people fly in from all over the world. Our patrons come to Pattaya, sail on Ruby Rose 2. We had so much fun with everyone. We took everyone out sailing. And then we also in the evening had kind of drinks receptions and dinners and just lots of chats and laughs and a couple of quiet late nights as well. It was super, super fun. And we've always said, as soon as we get to Europe, we are doing the same thing for those patrons who couldn't come to Thailand or just want to come sailing with us again. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick little bit of information. If you are a patron of ours, then you are welcome to attend. It is open to all patrons. This event will be taking place in mid-August in Turkey. So I will link just up here or up here. <laughs> Can never quite work out which corner it is. The link to our Patreon post that tells you all the details. You do have to be a patron to attend this event. So if you've ever thought about signing up, then now is a great time to do so. Our patrons also get lots of other benefits. For example, access to a WhatsApp group, a very, very active WhatsApp group. They get real-time updates. So we've been keeping them updated with all of our shipping news and everything that's been going on in Turkey. We had some issues with our boat shipping. We had to claim on the shipping company's insurance. So we've had a little bit of uh, boat work and boat repair to be done here in Turkey, as well as early access to our videos and live chats as well, lots of things. So I just wanted to give you guys that little bit of information, give our Patreon page a quick plug. Uh, if Patreon isn't for you, totally fine. If you are a subscriber here on YouTube and you don't want to move over to Patreon, that's totally fine. We love you, we appreciate you. Thank you for watching this episode and thank you for subscribing to our channel. It means so much to us. Let's move on with the episode. I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, hello, BTS. We were just asked to uh, change to 7373. So we're listening on 73 for any instruction. Over. Copy that. Uh, Ruby Rose 2 listening on 73. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the balls on some fisherman in a three meter long wooden skiff refusing to get out of the way in the shipping lane for a 138 meter cargo ship. But literally, yeah, they're like, and we're not moving. All right, we are pretty much through the Singapore Strait. Wow, what an experience. That was very, very cool. I've enjoyed that. Yeah, it's good, wasn't it? Shipping is not to be trifled with. These things are big, but you know what? It's not as crowded as Dover, and the weather's lovely, yeah. and the sea state's calm, yeah. and it seems to be very well policed and organized by uh, Singapore VTS. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of police craft out here. There's a lot of like, kind of the traffic wardens of the sea. And it was actually a pretty stress-free experience. At no point was I like, ah, the VTS keep an eye on you. The police, if you don't answer the radio, the police can't find you. And then VTS, they change position, move to port, move to starboard, let this vessel pass, increase speed. They literally, you know, they just shepherd you through the strait. That's right. yeah. So actually, for anyone wanting to do this, you know, everyone's like, ooh, this is, ooh, this is your port strait. I found it to be pretty straightforward. The tides matched up with when we left. And I think that if you were punching foul tide, I think at some point there was two knots of tide with us. And to have two knots against you, you'd be doing four knots through there, which would just be a massive pain in the uh, what was the best source of tides you found? Because you, we had some discrepancy. Wind, the impredict wind. But yeah, apart from that, 
We're heading up, we've got two points of anchorage. One is in about 10, one is about 25 miles. And we'll just see how much we get in knot, but we're doing eight knots, so we'll probably go for the, the one further on, right? Yeah. All right, well, off we go. We are only about eight miles away from tonight's anchorage. You can see some islands behind me, I hope. That's where we're aiming for. And we are officially in the Strait of Malacca. We have left Singapore behind us. We have left the Gulf of Thailand behind us. We have left the South China Sea behind us. And we are in the Malacca Straits. And you can see for yourself what a huge difference it makes being on this side of the peninsula. The prevailing winds are coming from the northeast. So you can imagine that we're essentially in the lee of the land. The whole of the peninsula of Malaysia is blocking that wind from where we are. And you can see what a difference that makes. It's just like so calm, so flat. It is beautiful, it is absolutely beautiful. No kind of swell, no big rollers coming in. I mean, I like that as well, but it's really nice just having a bit of a change. Oh man, I could do with a day off, but we got to get to Phuket. We're on a mission. All right, we are here. We are anchored up for the night and it's only 4.30 I think, which is quite early for us these days. Anyway, we are on a lee shore at the moment. You can see behind me that we're on a lee shore and the boat is pointing out into the Malacca Strait. <laughs> There's only about eight knots of wind, so the boat's actually extremely comfortable. One of the many, many, many advantages of being on a catamaran. Although I must say that I think even on the monohull, this would be fairly comfy. Anyway, so I'm doing a little bit of uh, work. Oh, who's that? That's a WhatsApp notification from our Patreon group. One of them has just told me that the um, episode that I've published yesterday for patrons oh dear final cut pro has been a massive pain recently and it just keeps on like losing like um keeps on breaking the connections to the to its files and you don't realize when you're working in the project and then when you export it it comes up with this like red error card and yeah obviously had i watched it after i exported it i would have picked up on that but anyway our quality control i.e our amazing patrons um told me that there was an issue so I need to do it again which is fine the bigger issue is that we don't have Starlink which I've regretted almost every single day since we got back to the boat and the internet here I have I have nothing I have e e nothing obviously I'm still getting some whatsapp messages but I have no coverage at all Nick at some point will get tired of what he's doing or finish what he's doing or something and we'll sit down and have a beer and uh, yeah congratulate ourselves on not only making it through the Singapore Strait but turning north again so we're now back on our way north and also let me just double check I know we've got about 500 miles to go before we get to Phuket and we've done 900 miles so we're you know kind of almost two-thirds of the way through our journey our very very hectic journey <laughs> which is good it'll all be worth it it'll all be worth it